Now he says, and listen to him, God is pleading from his heart now with these people. He says in verse 5, O my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Chittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Now, may I say to you that we have here a very wonderful incident given to us here. And this incident goes back, actually, to the time they were ready to pass through the land. They had to go all the way around Edom because Edom wouldn't let them through. And God had led them around, and then they came to Moab, and the king of Moab was this fellow Balak. So Balak wanted to curse the children of Israel, and he hired this prophet Balaam, who was a lover of money. He was a hired preacher, and yet he was a prophet that seemed to have information from God. God certainly spoke through him, but God finally judged him, and he was called in to curse the children of Israel. And you will recall that it says, he answered him from Chittim. And by the way, that was the last camping spot before they entered Moab after Balaam began his ministry against them and unto Gilgal. And Gilgal was the first place they camped when they got into the promised land proper. And so that we are located here geographically. And I'm not going to go back over these prophecies that Balaam gave, but he couldn't curse Israel. God would not let him curse Israel. Now, he did something very damaging when he saw he could not curse Israel. The last word that he gave, and what happened was that Balak took him up to one mountain. They looked down at the camp of Israel, and Balaam started out by saying, How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? God was not doing them evil. God was on their side. Now, if you go down in the camp, they weren't perfect because God was dealing with them down there. But no enemy on the outside is going to find fault with them. And you know, that's the wonderful thing today that the children of Israel didn't know it, that there was an enemy trying to curse them. And God was protecting them and defending them. And even old Balaam had to say, How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? I'm not able to do it. God would not permit it. Now, we are told that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And God deals with us personally. I know that he has with me. And severely, I'm confident that cancer that I had was a judgment of God upon me. I accept it. Is that from him? And I thank him for hearing my prayer. But I'm very thankful that I have up yonder an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he defends me. He's on my side. He's my advocate. He is the one that today says that I'm his child. I I'm in the family of God, and he's not going to let anyone on the outside curse. May I say to you, that ought to answer today the superstitious and wild views that are going around that God's children can be demon-possessed and they can be cursed by this. I don't believe one whit of it. Now, I think the devil can give you a whole lot of trouble. And I think that he can certainly make life miserable for you. But no demon's going to possess God's child. We've got an advocate. And I don't care who you are. If you're a child of God, he's on your side. And he's defending you. As Martin Luther put it, when it seemed the whole world had turned against him at one time, he says, one with God is a majority. I'm on the side of the majority. How about you? That's very important. And God is telling his people, I've defended you. 
even when Balaam attempted to curse you and Balak got disgusted with him, he took him from one mountain to another to four mountains and he couldn't curse them. But he gave some awful advice. He says the thing to do now, since you can't curse them, you can't fight them, join them. In other words, it's the same old story. If you can't fight City Hall, join City Hall. So you go down and intermarry with them. And that's what happened. And that introduced idolatry among the people. And that was the occasion for the brazen serpent because of the rotten advice that a false prophet had given to the people. And I say to you today, and I want to say this very carefully, because we're getting today a whole lot of so-called marriage counseling. And there's a world of that going on today. And I want to say that a great deal that comes to me, and I only get it secondhand, but that is handed to me and my friend, it doesn't happen to be scriptural. Now, I know you can pull out a little verse here and a little verse there, and you can build up quite a case. But the only thing that's going to make a marriage work, friends, is love. If he can look down at her and say, I love you, and she can look back at him and say, I love you. Now, my friend, you've just about solved all the problems when you've done that. If you can come that far, this idea today that you can work out these in that type of a manner. Oh, my people, God says, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, devised and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Chittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. God was righteous, God, but he was defending you. He was on your side. And it's wonderful to have God on our side today. How wonderful this is.